Are we live? Woohoo! Hello, everybody. I want to welcome you. It is still May 27th, 2018. What day is that? My birthday. And I actually got to celebrate. I got to celebrate it today. I'm very excited. I have had cake. We got to eat out. People gave me gifts. Thank you, all you precious people. If you sent me gifts in the mail or just gave them to me in person, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. You are all a blessing. And for those who didn't know and didn't, I love you anyway. But write it on your calendar. No, you don't have to do that. Anyway, don't you love my little smiley face balloon? Jen got me this one. Of course she did. <laughs> and then she got me this one here that says, it is your day. I finally got a day, right? How wonderful. We did have a third one that actually was a superhero balloon. Guess what? The host ended up with it. When we pulled up in our driveway and we were getting out, it just broke loose. Isn't that strange? From the string. Went way up into the sky. I'm sure the hosts were all high-fiving it. Because let me tell you, they showed up at my birthday party also. We may show you some pictures later. But right now, I just want to let you know that I appreciate all the birthday cards, all the congratulations. And in this, in this one session here, I will actually read every comment. So if you want to, you know, blow me kisses, send a little heart, say happy birthday. I know because I haven't been able to celebrate in a long time. And I got up this morning and I was just going to have cake. And the Holy Spirit said, you will have a birthday party. You invite all your staff and you have a great time. And you know what? The weather was amazing. It stopped raining. They had seating for all of us at the Cheesecake Factory. If you've never eaten there. I can uh, actually tell you that one of the best things they serve is teriyaki chicken. Although I didn't get that today, but I did get their carrot cake and it was amazing. I actually ate a little salad because we ate real early for me. We ate like at what, 6.30, which is way, six hours before, okay, six about six hours before my regular eating time. So I just brought my food home, but I promise you I will eat the rest of the cake. And so I wanted to say thank you to everybody. It's wonderful to take a day to have fun, you know, and the Holy Spirit said, you're going to have some fun. You need some fun. We all do. You don't want to get burnt out, worn out. You know, um, you need to take time to have fun. You hear me say that all the time. Ask the Father to let you have some fun. And so today I listened to the Holy Spirit. I had a wonderful day and it's not over because I'm actually celebrating my birthday for three days. It started the other day. Today I had a party. Tomorrow I'm going to have some more cake because Kyle, who's one of my staff members, made an amazing chocolate cake. I can't wait to have some of that too. A very small piece now. Um, and so, and tomorrow, of course, we all know what day that is. That's Memorial Day, and I'm definitely going to talk about that in a few minutes. But I want to tell you, you know in heaven, all of your family members in heaven who are living there, friends and family on the day of your birthday I'm sure my own father my daddy who raised me in heaven and my brothers my brother who's up there I'm certain they went and got me a gift for my birthday and put it in my mansion that's being built did you know by the time you go home to heaven every year you are apart from your family or your loved ones they will get you a gift and you get to have a welcome home party when you go to heaven and then you get to open every present they got you while you were apart because they're not going to forget you. They love you more. They're cheering you on. They're declaring over you. And I know that they were doing that. Uh, my friends and family in heaven were doing that. And I want to thank all of you too. Thank you. You know, this is a real thing. It's not like you're here and they're there and you're, you're never going to see them again. One day we will be together in glory. And it will be amazing. And you'll have so much fun in heaven. And then one day, we will move to the new earth. And it's then, that's going to be something that's going to be cosmic. So I want to encourage all of you. It's okay to celebrate your birthday. And I really enjoyed my day today. So now I'm going to switch gears. And we're going to talk about Memorial Day. This is a very important day. I have many military members in my family now. And in the past, I also had some. And my own father was in World War II. He was a scout. And he went behind enemy lines, got information for the armies, our American armies. 
And he was he never got shot once, never got wounded once. God kept him and protected him even then. And then I have my uncles, some of my uncles were probably in the Navy, the Army. My own husband was in the Marines. Yes, Ugh. you know what? He still thinks he is, but that's okay. <laughs> but tomorrow we will celebrate and thank all of our military, those currently serving in the armed forces and those who did in the past. A strong army is important to have in your country if you're gonna be strong in this world and to cover protect the people of America and also help other countries. That's why we have a strong military. I personally want to thank them. My husband always prays for our military and all the first responders and he's very serious when he does that. So I want to thank all of you uh, ahead of time for serving, all those who serve either here at home on bases or if you're stationed overseas, I pray for you. I send the host to watch over you. I want to recognize what you've done and I want to let you know if you were not watching uh, the Annapolis Military Academy just had a graduation of 1,000 uh, Navy students, right? Oh, they're not students, military. And I want you to know that President Trump stood after the service, after it was over. He shook every hand of all 1,000 of those military uh, graduates. And I want to congratulate President Trump for honoring them, you know, and, and he knows what they stand for. I'm sure tomorrow he'll have an amazing speech to make. Uh, don't miss his speeches. They're filled with God's frequency. They will encourage you, empower you. I love America. God bless America. God bless all of our military. And this flag that you see behind me right here, this one, was actually the flag of one of my husband's best friend who just passed on to heaven a couple months ago. And the military was so kind to let us have a service for him in the naval chapel on the base here which they don't normally do unless you've retired or you're hurt in action and I tell you the flag ceremony was beautiful and so this flag was given to my husband he will then take it to uh, his friend Ron's family out in Yuma California where their tribe lives because he was an American Indian but he served he served he was an amazing marine and he lived his life to make other people happy. And we miss him, but we celebrate with him also. And so there are many of people out there who've lost your loved ones or served in the military. I ask God to bless you, to bring you peace, and let you know that they won't ever be forgotten. And so God bless America. God bless our military. And we thank you, Father, for trusting us to watch over people's souls and their hearts and to bless and pray for them in Jesus' name. There you go, military. You go. And I'm going to switch uh, things again, subjects again. We are now calling all the weather warriors to come forward, stand up, and be powerful. You know, if you didn't know this, I was just in Germany. I came home, and somebody told me that there was a storm out in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, I was not aware of this at all, so if any of you feel led... You know, you might want to mention, if you know I'm having a Facebook or something, you might say, you need to check out, there's a storm, you know, there's a storm on the way. Or one, if the first time you see one coming off the tip of Africa, many, many storms, hurricanes, or ones that think they want to be a hurricane, come off the tip of Africa, and there's a real reason for that. That was the slave route. Uh, not a good thing at all. And so many of them come off the tip of Africa, and they make their way across the ocean. Some of them end up here in America. Some go to the Philippines, Puerto Rico, you know, or, you know, into the Gulf of Mexico. Sometimes they hit Mexico, sometimes Texas, Louisiana. I get this going on. We are not tolerating any more of these storms. We will not tolerate hurricanes. I'm not going to tolerate hurricanes, tsunamis, um, earthquakes, these horrible fires that burn up you know, half of states sometimes. We're about to do some intense training, not right now in this session, but I will let you know when we're going to have one so you all will be aware of it. We're going to be serious about this. This is like a move that God is starting for us to take authority over the weather. Heaven has no weather disasters. So on earth, as it is in heaven, we've been given authority over them because Christ took authority over the storm and he, he was actually teaching his own disciples how to do that. It's our right as a believer. 
And I know when we started doing this last year, people were criticizing and laughing about all of it. It was not a joke. And we did make a difference. So we're going to do that this time. So I'm actually going to stand up right now. And I'm going to get my staff. And I will say it if you want to repeat it after me. Um, or just look at this Facebook later and, and learn how you come against a, something that's about to be a hurricane. I don't even look at it, so I'm not going to. I know they named it. I don't even care about the name. Okay, if you want to call it by name, do it. But I'm going to come against that storm that is in the Gulf of Mexico heading for America. I'm not tolerating it. I'm not going to sit back and do nothing or say nothing. I'm going to operate in my authority given to me by Jesus Christ. So right now I'm going to get my staff. So here I go. I know I'm messing up the set and everything, but you know what? That's fine. I am, I'm not. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. So here we go. There's one of my staffs, okay? This is one that I, I take authority over the weather with and declare things over America, our country, and other countries. I have other staffs, but that's what this one is. This is my weather warrior staff. So this is what I'm going to say to this, this storm right now. It has no right to be there. Okay, I'm not tolerating it anywhere around my country, doing devastation or wreaking havoc, taking life, destroying property, all right? I'm not. It's too bad we can't send them to hell, but, you know, we can't do that. Obviously, it's a physical thing. So we're going to take authority in the spirit realm over the thing. So I say, I, as a believer of Jesus Christ, I take authority over that storm, trying to build and become uh, very destructive in the Gulf of Mexico. And I say to you, Storm, you will diminish. I command the millibars. That is the pressure. I command the high pressure in that storm to rise. What happens when we do that? It begins to suck the life out of that storm. That storm is driven by warm weather and water. And, and, and when it's like that, it will feed off of that and it makes it stronger and stronger. When we command the millibars to rise in that, in that storm, it actually sucks the life out of it and it crushes it. It's like it crushes it, it begins to be downgraded. We command it to be downgraded because the millibars are rising in Jesus' name. And we're going to keep saying that tonight, tomorrow. You're going to hear reports of it being downgraded because it has to obey us. Like the storm had to listen to Christ. This is something that you have to operate in. It's, it's like it takes a, a process. You have to start recognizing you have authority. Then you start talking about the authority. Then you take authority. And even if something doesn't happen, you say that, don't stop doing it. I've been doing this for many, many years. Even before it was talked about, you know, in the church or known in the church. I'm sure some people knew somewhere in this world, there's always believers that get revelation and I'm grateful that they do, but right now you're getting it. You're getting it from Jesus Christ, who had power over the storm. We have a right as a joint heir. Somebody sent me a message saying, who do you think you are, Jesus Christ? Do you think you can command the weather? And I went, absolutely, yes, I'm a joint heir. Are you kidding? He took authority over the weather, and we're supposed to be doing the same. The works he said that I do, you will do also, and that's what we're doing. We are doing his works, okay? And they get greater even greater than they are now, but right now, we command that storm to diminish. We command the millibars to rise. We want to crush the life out of that storm. We say, you will not do destruction to our country. You will not bring flooding rains. We command the rain to cease and that storm to be crushed, that it will be downgraded in Jesus' name, and we're going to keep at it, weather warriors. Don't give up. You're exercising your right as a believer, as a joint heir of Jesus Christ. He demonstrated it to his disciples, and we're learning from him. So I expect to see that thing downgraded and diminish, and we might want to hit it, but I haven't looked at the direction or anything yet. We might see about doing that tomorrow, maybe, but I'll say something tomorrow also, because we don't have to tolerate the things of the enemy. We know God sent the weather, but we know the enemy will take anything he can to use it against us, and we, we say right now also, I take power over all the power of the enemy that's trying to control that storm in the Gulf in any way whatsoever. And I command the host of heaven, you go and begin to shred that storm system to nothing. 
Do not talk to people about it being strong. Do not talk to people about, oh, wow, what's happening? Oh, my gosh, we need to hurry. We need to run. No. You make a difference. You rule. You reign with Jesus Christ. We're not tolerating the storm. Amen. Now, I'm going to speak a blessing over everybody. I'll go ahead and sit back down. I forgot to wave my little flag. There you go. God bless America. God bless all the military and those who serve to help keep us safe here in this country. And so I'm going to sit back down for a minute. I'm really, I'm really stretching. Oh, don't worry. Nobody got knocked out. That was just my staff. Okay. Um, oh, let me take a little drink. A red, white, and blue cup. I hope you've got red, white, and blue to wear tomorrow, okay? Is it still there? Is it still there? People are asking what to do about it. And how okay, to all right. My it. sister Jen just held up this paper, which she knows to do that, but she thinks there's something I should add. She wants me to say something to the weather warriors about the volcanoes. And I know, I, like I said, I bet I was in um, Seoul, Korea. I was in um, many places these last few months and just was in Germany. I don't have a lot of time to watch the news myself, so I depend on my staff to say something. Well, that volcano, we know that, that what happens is that magma that's in the middle of the earth, it begins to get really, really hot and pressure builds. And eventually, uh, if they're active volcanoes especially, and I know in Hawaii, they actually have this happen, I don't know how often, but I think this is on one of the main big islands that this is happening. And I know that some people have already impacted there, so we don't want to. So God, we pray for protection for the people, number one. We pray for restoration for anything that's already been uh, destroyed over there. We thank you for the peace of God to be released into those people. And again, that may be something that's natural. But the enemy loves to spread fear. So we come against the spirit of fear. We kick it off of that island. And we command the host of heaven. We take power over all the power of the enemy. Again, it's important if you're going to send the host. You have to take power over the enemy. I'm talking about the devil trying to use that volcano to bring great destruction. Anytime he's involved in anything, you as a believer, Jesus gave you power over all the power of the enemy. And let me tell you, he gets in the weather. He gets in the natural elements, wherever he can bring destruction. And we sit back and let him do it. You know, we've been doing that for generations. We aren't doing that anymore. So we're going to speak against the volcano also. And so we say, uh, we take power over all the power of the enemy, trying to use that volcano in any way to bring destruction. We command the host of heaven to go and begin to affect the lava flow the direction of the lava flow, because we don't want it flowing towards people's homes or in general in areas where people are living. There's some parts of the island they don't they don't have people on there. So I want the host to redirect that lava flow and begin to shred it. I know that sounds wild, but let me tell you, they are sent for us to command. We're gonna see what is happening, gonna happen because this is something new. We have authority over volcanoes, we have authority over earthquakes. We can tell them that they're not gonna shake the earth that they won't bring destruction to the people. We can even tell them to stop. Christ, stop the storm. So while we're taking power and authority over the devil, controlling that volcano, people will be laughing about this. I totally ignore them. Just ignore them. They don't know what they're saying and they don't even know what's going on. They don't understand spirit realm authority. They don't understand that Jesus made us join heirs, but I do. So I take authority over that volcano. I command it to cease exploding, shooting out the lava. Let the pressure be released, but without any destruction to people. I command that lava, you will stop flowing and you will crystallize before you touch any more people or their properties. In Jesus' name, we have the host of heaven up there shredding that stuff and we're commanding it to cease and cease. In Jesus' name, because we have the right to use that. So if you want to come against it, you come against it with the pressure being diminished on the inside of the volcano that's pushing that lava out. And let the lava cease and not go into the direction where anyone will be harmed or hurt by it. And there will be no backlash of tsunamis coming to that island. Sometimes that is, it is not going to happen. Okay, when all that goes into the ocean, sometimes it does cause a tsunami wave. 
no tsunamis because we have authority over them also. So I'm glad Jen held out that little piece of paper. Don't you ever forget, you know, whether it's fires burning up the country, okay, whether it's tsunamis, whether it's lightning bolts hitting places, whether it is tornadoes or hurricanes, no matter what it is in this natural earth, we were given dominion over the earth in Genesis 1.26. And then Jesus Christ, while he was on the earth, gave his power over all the power of the enemy that wants to control things, to bring to destruction. And so, God, we thank you in Jesus' name that you sent your son, that he gave us the right to stand up and take authority. So, Father, right now, I'm going to bless all those watching. And I tell you, when I was in Germany, I imparted the anointing uh, to be a forerunner for Christ in the kingdom age to live heaven culture. So anyone who's been working on that living on earth as they do in heaven, if you've been actively working on living heaven culture on this earth, God, I release uh, and impart the anointing into them to be forerunners in the earth in living heaven culture for this kingdom age. God bless them, use them, write their name down, and anyone who wants it right now, say, yes, I receive it. And so I bless them in their lying down, in their rising up. I bless them, God, in, in their relationship with you, with your presence to invade their home, with passion, compassion for others, Father, to bless their finances, to give them sound wisdom and extreme discernment and revelation in this powerful time we live in. May the host go with you and celebrate this day. See you later.